all right hi everyone and uh, welcome to my video tutorial series this would be getting started with apache airflow uh, in python using python of course um so before starting these are the prerequisite we are i assume you know following thing things uh, i guess there's a typo there i can fix that later on it's not a problem so i assume that you have a basic understanding of python programming language uh, i assume you know a little bit about docker containers and a general uh, understanding about object oriented programming uh, if you want to ask any questions in the, uh, in the if you want to ask any kind of questions uh, you can of course uh, reach out to me on linkedin as well as you can go to my blog or you can comment on the video as well what are we expecting to learn from this uh, course or small video series or whatever you want to call a crash course so i'm basically going to try to uh, make you understand about basic uh, concepts about airflow I would try to and uh, I would try to explain some of the technical terms like DAG, what a DAG is, and all of that. How to write a Python operators, exchanging data between the Python operators, installing dependencies such as pandas, numpy's on Airflow. So everything has to be done on a Docker container, right? So let's go to the uh, Airflow website and kind of have a look at it. What exactly an Airflow is? So I'm gonna read something and then we'll start uh, with the coding session. Okay? Apache Airflow. Airflow is a platform created by the community to program to, to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. So that means basically, if you want to schedule something, let's say I want to generate a report at the end of the month every time, and I should be and you should email this report to all the you know like the PMs and stuff. So you could um, make a pipeline uh, to do that. So Apache Airflow does that. It uses Celery workers behind the scenes uh, for you. Um, you know uh, when you're working with Celery, it's always very hard because you have to install Flower and all the dependencies. But Airflow takes care of all of that automatically. Uh, here are the principles: scalable. Airflow allows a module, modular architecture and uses a message queue to orchestrate an arbitrary number of workers. Uh, Airflow is um, ready to scale to infinity. That's what they say because you know they use its workers and it can scale upon uh, the type of instances of your machine. Uh, dynamic Airflow is dynamic, so that means Airflow pipelines are defined in Python, uh, allowing for dynamic pipeline generation. This allows writing code that uh, instantiate the pipelines dynamically. Uh, extensible that means easily define your own operators you can define your own operators which we'll talk about in the tutorial and extend the libraries to fit uh, the level of abstraction and suit for your environment so whatever libraries you want to install to do, do that elegant airflow pipelines um, are uh, are lean and uh, explicit parameterized it's uh, built into a core using a powerful uh, Jinja templating engine um, so that makes sense you know flash Jinja same thing so here are the features, uh, pure Python. Uh, I'm gonna read first and then we'll jump into coding. So feel free to skip this part if you want. Uh, pure Python, uh, no more command line or XML. Uh, blank magic, use standard Python features to create workflows including uh, date time formats for scheduling and loop dynamically generate tasks. This allows you to maintain full flexibility when building your workflows. So basically it's used for building a workflow. A uh, useful UI, so Airflow provides your UI. Let's read that. Monitors and schedule manages your workflow via robust and modern web application. No need to learn Chrome-like interface. You always have to uh, insight in the status of the logs completed on ongoing tasks. So basically it has a beautiful UI, which I would of course walk you through everything uh, where you can see all the workflows, all the pipelines. A robust integration, Airflow provides many plug uh, plug and play opera uh, operators that are ready to execute your task um, on Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and many third-party services. This makes Airflow easy to apply on the current infrastructure and extends the next generation technologies. That's good, easy to use. Anyone with the Python knowledge can deploy workflows. Apache Airflow does not limit the scope of your pipeline. You can use it to build an ML model, transfer, uh, transfer data manage your infrastructures and much more. Wow, open source, as you know, it's an open source. Integration, if you can integrate using Hadoop, AWS Glue, uh, Kinesis Data Firehose, uh, Big Data, uh, AWS Badge, Google Cloud Key, Apache Hive, Google Cloud Task, and much more. We have so many more. EMR, um, yeah, feel free to come and you know read more about AWS Lambda and all of that. So yeah, come here and read more about this, about Airflow. So let's go to the slide. So with that being said, now let's uh, go, let me actually walk you through the Airflow UI in the first part. So I'll be showing you the different tabs and what these tabs does, okay? So let's watch the Airflow UI in action. 
So let's walk over the Airflow UI first and understand what exactly Airflow is all about. As I said in the first part, Airflow is nothing but a scheduling, used for scheduling, creating pipelines and stuff. Okay, so this is a UI when I, right now I'm running everything through a Docker container. As you can see, everything is running up. I have a very simple example. Don't worry, we would walk into the code in the next chapter. So in this chapter, what I wanna show you is the UI, an overview about the UI. So as soon as you go to the localhost port 8080, you would see a web UI or a web application similar to this. So the, let's go from top to bottom approach. On the top, there are following tabs in DAGs, data profiling, browse, admin, docs, and about. DAG is basically nothing but a fancy name. Think of this as a process or uh, basically think of this as a task which you can enable it, right? So right now, as you can see in the DAG, we have the one task right here. Um, so if you want to schedule this task, as you can see, the schedule says daily. That means it's gonna, this task would run daily. Remember, we are not going to the code right now. We are just understanding uh, the tab and the UI right now. Daily means it's gonna run daily. Recent task here, what is this? Basically, whenever you turn this button on, it would start the task, right? And it would, pro it would first of all put it in the queue and then once it's done, you can see a success message here. A last one is basically it would tell you when the when was the last time you ran that DAG run is basically that the tag or think of this as a watchdog counter which started right that's that uh, so that's the basic table format now there are a couple of things here trigger DAG that means if you want to forcefully turn the DAG on you can do that tree view which I would cover what exactly that is uh, in the in this basically it's basically allows you to see your pipelines or just basically a workflow or a block level diagram I'll, I'll show you about that let's just view graph you in, in it basically tells you in graph task duration gives you a graph of the duration of the task right task tries it basically tell you about all of the things about the task tries then uh, let's go over to, I guess, let's see code view. Code view is basically where you can see your code, right? Uh, we would see that again. Uh, logs basically would basically show you everything about the logs. Refresh is basically refreshing the window. And the cross means you want to delete the tag or the basically the, the task that you have. So let's see first of all what I have, okay? So I'm going to click on this task. When you click on this task, you would come to this format. So there are two things, graph view and tree view. Tree view, as you know, right? Uh, we have a tree like structure, like a binary tree, how it goes like in branches. So this is basically, um, you know, a workflow that I'm defining. So it's saying that, hey, when you start the process, the first thing you got to do is read the CSV file and then the process the file. Very simple, okay? Nothing fancy here, okay? So right now, let's go to the graph view, which I would show you. So here you can see I have, oops, sorry. So if you see, I have two block diagram here. Um, as you can see, read CSV and process file. So the first thing you would do is uh, read the file and then the second block is process. So it's going to process the file. So basically, you're defining your process or blocks. So as you can see, uh, now, what's interesting here is when you, whenever a task is executing or you fail, the color of the box, the border of this would change. For example, a, a green one, a green border on this would indicate that the process was complete. Yellow means it's still retrying that. Red means it failed. So you would see colors around this box. So that's that. Task duration is basically how long the task took. Task tries, it would basically show you if how many times it retried, if it's something failed. Code is, uh, don't worry about the code. As I said, we'll go over all this code. So basically code is nothing but where you see the code. Trigger DAG, of course, I told you what trigger DAG is all about. So let's come here. So uh, then you have data profiling. If you want to know more details about that, you could go there, explore that uh, parts as well. Um, there are something logs, jobs, uh, more about that. So what we are in interested right now is in this first uh, tab, that is the DAGs. Now let's see the workflow, how everything works. As soon as I turn it on, see how it works. And then we'll learn to create all of these, okay? So I turned it on and I wanna click on the refresh. So what happened is first of all, uh, it started the DAG. You can see it started the, uh, the whatever you wanna call the task. And here you can see it's scheduled now. So it's gonna, okay, he's like, okay, I got your request. I'm gonna schedule it, okay. I'm working on it, I'm working on it when the time comes. So I'm looking for it. So the time is gonna come and if you refresh it again, so here you can see both the tasks are complete. Um, you can click on this button. Uh, so here you can see when was the last time it was run. So the last time it was run on 2021 01 23 000. Uh, that was the when the DAG, the DAG was success. You can click on this. So it had two, two things, right? So success, success, these are my task ID. You can see the logs here if you click there, right? So let's just explore that quickly. 
So I'm just exploring you the UI right now. Don't worry about coding and all. So yeah, we have some logs. It's fine. Everything is working fine. Let's go to the graph view. I want to show you something about that. Oh, sorry about that. So now if you could see, uh, I'm not sure if you could uh, see, but it's it, the, the border is actually green. I mean, uh, it, so it shows that uh, everything was success. So if you can also go to the tree view, and here now you have these uh, dots. So the green dot means, as I said, success. Uh, light green means it's still running. Red means failed, skipped, uh, upstream, all of that. So you have all of these uh, stuff. When you hover your mouse, it would tell you that the state is success. So it took 0.38 uh, seconds to do that. Uh, this is when it started. This is when it ended. Operator was the thing, but just a function. We are writing a function. So these are the two tasks it tells me. And this is when the watchdog started or whatever you want to call it. Uh, sorry, the DAG started. Sorry, sorry about the watchdog. I, I keep uh, saying that, but yeah, this is when the DAG or the counter or the whatever you want to call it, it started, right? So that's the UI of it. Okay, so everything about the UI, hopefully that makes sense. You could, you know, come here, explore more. Uh, you can hover over these tabs and see if you're curious more about that. So that's that, right? So let's go to the DAG again. So this is how you would start a task. You would click on the toggle button, then you would schedule it. And based on the, uh, whatever you have a schedule, you could have a cron uh, expression here. This is just a sugar coat uh, daily, it means basically it would, behind the scene, you would convert into a cron, uh, cron expression. So as I say, it's a sugar coat. So the next time you would run is tomorrow uh, at whatever time we scheduled it. So that's up just about the UI of um, Airflow. Now let's understand uh, in the next part, there is a coming part, is how we can write a simple, uh, you know, a DAG function, how we can write a Hello World Python, how we can schedule it, how we can share uh, data between these two tasks. And then um, uh, another thing that is about uh, XCOM, that is, you know, we will learn about that. So how we can communicate among these tasks, how we can install dependencies, dockers and all of that. So the first thing that we do is the, in the next part is we install Airflow now, okay? So we learn how to install Airflow, but using Docker containers. So let's learn how we can install Airflow now. Okay, so that's the part we're gonna do. I'm gonna use IntelliJ and Docker containers to do that. So let's uh, head over to project. I'm gonna create a blank new project and start from scratch, okay? So uh, let's click on next. And all the project files could be found on my GitHub, okay? So Airflow, so let's call learn Airflow. So I'm gonna create a new project, which would be uh, called as learn Airflow. I think it's being opened on my other screen, so I'm gonna bring it here. So a couple of things we would like to do here is first of all, let me actually bring it here. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to see because uh, initially I had like two monitors, now I'm just working on a single monitor. One monitor is for recording and the second one is for at least seeing the snippets. Uh, it's fine. So first of all, we wanna create a directory called as project here, P-R-O-J-B-C-T project. So we have the directory here. Now, in this directory, we would like to uh, create certain files. Uh, the first one we would like to create is a Docker Compose file. Uh, let me actually do that. It's hard to see, you know, the monitor is pretty tiny. It's pretty um, hard to see. It's, let me see if I can make it a little bit here. Yeah, that, that's a little better. So uh, let's do this. Let's do a Docker Compose.yaml. So we're gonna write some uh, code from the GitHub, which I'm gonna copy here soon. Uh, once we do that, uh, we gotta create a folder called as Docker files. This is where we would, um, uh, this is where it, basically we would write all the codes for the Docker file. So let's create a directory called Docker files. And in that Docker files, I wanna create one file called as Docker file, which would be, you know, I'll, I'll show you what we do. Just follow with me what I'm doing right now, uh, Docker file. Okay, so that's that. Now let's head over to the Docker file. So uh, in the Docker file here, we have to write, uh, we have to install uh, this. Basically, we already have an image called as Pokal Docker Airflow 1.10.9. So that's the image I'm gonna use. So just that, that's all you can write here. So first thing is that, now the main thing that we have to do, the heavy lifting is on the Docker Compose file. So uh, this compose, I have, I have, I have, I, I did get this from the official. Um, what do you call that? Uh, this is from the official their uh, Airflow repository, so service. So we have to have a database. So um, as this one, I have copied from their snippets. They gave that in the website. So we are, we are saying that hey, I need a Postgres uh, database. Uh, these are the environment uh, Postgres user Airflow, Postgres password Airflow. Um, Postgres DB Airflow, so these, these are the table it's gonna have. Uh, max size, just some logging options if you want, uh, you can add that. 
Now, additionally, now we need a web server because that's where our scheduler is defined, our web server is defined, what you see on the UI. So I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna copy again a, a part of snippets which I grabbed from their website and I tweaked it a little bit. So I'm gonna copy that, so that's that. Now let's understand this part right here. So I'm saying that, hey, build everything in the folder called as Docker files, which is right here. Make sure uh, this matches, otherwise it's gonna be a problem. Uh, restart always, so we're saying that if anything goes wrong, please make sure you restart. This depends on PostgreSQL. Uh, environment variable load exm and executor as local. We would touch base upon this in the advanced concept. So right now it's a very basic, so whatever. Logging, just some logging here. Volume mount, we are saying that, hey, uh, mount everything that is there on my uh, computer in the current folder called as DAGs. We don't have that folder, we would create uh, the folder pretty soon. Uh, that's where we would write our first hello world task, okay? So for now, um, this won't do anything because we don't have anything. But actually, let's create a folder called as DAGs. So I'm gonna copy that here. And in the project directory, okay, go to directory and create a folder called as DAGs. We don't have anything inside uh, right now, but uh, we would soon add our first hello world file. Uh, that's about the volumes. Uh, port, we are just saying, hey, I want to access the web server on port 8080. And this is just a health check, basically what Airflow guys have defined. Basically every uh, 30 seconds, they are making sure they're checking that. And uh, if it is healthy, if it is not, it's gonna try for three times and then it's gonna time out. So that's that. So hopefully if you copied everything that I just said uh, in the file, everything should be working fine. Excuse me. Um, so that was a Docker file and then we have a compost file and then we have a DAGs folder, which we do not have, we do not have any code right there. So we have the compost file, head over to your terminal section here, directory, let's go to the project. Now here, what you wanna do first of all, make sure that there's nothing running, you don't have any running container. So make, so, uh, make sure first of all, Docker's container ls, Basically, this would show you all the running container. As you can see, I don't have anything. And also make sure to run this command, uh, uh, docker system uh, prune. It would just uh, delete all the unnecessary, what was that, docker system? Uh, I, I guess he was, sorry, docker image prune. So uh, this would basically uh, delete all the unnecessary images which has not been used. Okay, so that's that. Now let's start up our first uh, airflow. So you gotta say docker. Compose up, tack, tack, build. So this should uh, build your uh, Airflow uh, project. So it's gonna install, it's gonna download all the dependencies, Postgres, uh, Airflow and everything. So hopefully it should work. Let's wait for, yeah, you can see that Airflow message being started up. The, 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 the web server is starting soon. So looks like he did start up our airflow. And now if we go to, you should see something like this. We don't have any DAGs here right now. So that's the first part about installation about airflow. Uh, hopefully this should make sense. If you are, if you got this screen, uh, congratulations. If you did not got this screen, let me know what's going on with your stuff and maybe I can look into it or maybe I can suggest you something. So that's the first part. Now in the second part, let's write some DAGs or just of some basic hello. All right, so we would write our very first uh, DAG or a Python operator or a first task queue, whatever you wanna say. So remember we created this folder called as DAGs. Let me open up my snippets, uh, hopefully I can see that. <laughs> So now here, what you want to do is you want to create your first tag. So let's name this as, uh, let's call a Python file. And let's call this my first underscore DAG. Okay, so first underscore DAG, we'll write our first task here. So first thing, first, first thing for all, we need to import uh, these libraries. So uh, we don't need that one. Daytime sleep, oh, we don't need sleep. We don't need pandas. Okay. So we need to, first, first of all, we need to import time delta. Uh, we would import Airflow. From Airflow, we need to import DAG. DAG is nothing but just a scheduler. It's just in a simple way. I mean, to me, it's just a scheduler. So yeah, we import DAG and then we are saying that, hey, I wanna import a Python operator because I would like to execute a Python function, right? So uh, let's call this, uh, let's call, I mean, let's write a function. Um, uh, what, what, what do I call this? Uh, uh, first, 
function execute and um, let's write the function and then we will write um, first as usual you know hello world example and then we would learn about task and pandas and all of that so that's that return hello world okay so you know just a standard function uh, as we can do as you know we do we start with the hello world and it's, 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 it's like a like it's like a when you start something new you gotta start with the hello world like any program language c c plus plus you do a hello world right c out hello world so um yeah that's that now what we need to do is first of all we need to create a dag dag is nothing but a scheduler so we say with we say the word dag in the round brackets now this would take a couple of arguments so first of all let me just say uh, import dag as uh, yeah import dag because it's uh, is basically nothing but um we're saying that hey you want to create a dag instance and now here we would start uh, basically you know giving arguments so first of all the first thing that we need to do is we need to give a dag id uh, and i'll tell you what that is so the dag id remember on the ui we first saw that uh, there was some dag or some you know so it's just a name so i would highly recommend uh, the name should be same as the the file name um, that's what i do first dag uh, so that's the tag id that i would like to give after that uh, i would like to uh, give it a schedule interval of daily i would like to schedule this um, this dag daily uh, right so i would like to schedule the the, 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 the this like daily so that's that you could also write a cron expression uh, if you know cron expression uh, for example let me show you one of them this means that execute every two minutes this is just a cron expression for two minutes so okay so uh, this is just a sugar coat they have a built-in daily means you know just you would by default uh, get you could also give something like this in a string but yeah for now let's learn this now you have to give a default args. Uh, I will tell you what those are. Uh, so that's that. Let's give it a comma after that. So the default args would be the owner. First of all, you gotta tell who's the owner. So you will tell, hey, the owner is Airflow. Okay. Then uh, you gotta define a retries. That means how many times, if it fails, how many times you should retry. I won't say, hey, just retry once. And you should also specify retries after um, the retry day delay. That means retry after like five minutes. If it does not do anything after five, just whatever. Throw an error. That's that. And one very important thing is basically uh, start time. I'm just giving it an old time. Right now it's 2021, first Jan 24. So I'm just giving it an old time. Whatever you want to give. I mean, you know, I'm just giving a start date. So these are the default uh, arguments you would give up to uh, this. Now, there is one more thing that I would say. I mean, by default, it's a false, but I would like to specify that. Now, you would ask, Samuel, what is this catch up false? I would explain you that uh, when we go to the UI because uh, it's basically from this time, let's say from 2021, uh, this date till 21, right now it's Jan, right? So, until that, how many tasks? I mean, there were like, how many days were there? So, all these tasks were skipped, right? So. When you say catch up true, it would compute all of that, like from uh, what is this 2020 uh, January, right? So 11 January 2020, so January, uh, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So all of that DAGs would be computed if you because it, you already you lost that, right? You're giving a uh, date, you're giving a date which is old in time. So you see what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but yeah. Oops, let me actually give it to one. So yeah, catch up as false. So by default, it's usually false, but I'm just specifying that as well. Okay, hey, it has to be false. Now we do that. Now it's very easy. So what you do is remember we wrote this pass. Uh, let's let's just indent this a little bit. It looks a little nice. Uh, yeah. So now what you gotta do is you gotta write your code. You know? So what do you wanna do is you wanna say, uh, uh, what, 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 we we name this as first function execute. So we call that just a name i'm giving it a name and then we say python operator because you are using a python operator right and now this python operator would take several arguments so first of all it has to take a task id uh again as i said a good thing i would just give the task id as the function name uh, this is what i do uh, but whatever whatever you want to give like as i said 
Then you have a Python callable. Uh, the callable is the function that you want to call. Remember, it's not a round bracket. You have to give the address of the function. So you can do that by doing you, when you don't specify round brackets, you would basically um, do that. Do that. So doing these things, just that. Okay. Hopefully, if everything was correctly done, uh, I guess it should work, right? So let's try out uh, the DAG. We should print a hello world. So again, we would say first of all, you want to say Docker compose down. Okay, now we would say docker compose, docker compose up, tag tag, build, I would build uh, the all of that with the DAG. So remember one thing to take away is the file name and the DAG ID, make sure it's same, otherwise it creates kind of an issues. Um, uh, just a suggestion, so yeah. And so it's starting the DAG, Airflow has been started, uh, everything is working fine, it looks like everything is good. Now I can head over to the dashboard and just refresh this. Hopefully I should see that DAG instance here, so it's loading now. And there you go, we have the DAG. Now, uh, as you can see, nothing is scheduled, let's turn on the DAG. So we turned it on, now we refresh it. So as you can see, the DAG was started, that's running. Now it's scheduled, one task is scheduled, let's refresh again and it was complete so success let's go there and let's see if you see the so if you see the task id is the name of the function that we said dag id was whatever we gave the name uh it's a python operator start date end date duration uh job id i gave it job id host name whatever blah 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 we don't need to worry about it. so we can go to the logs and we should see the hello world uh and sure enough we see that i mean that's the first part we did okay now the next chapter is basically how you can write multiple function and share data from one function to other function or how you can give query parameters to that. So let's learn about that. First of all, let's learn about how we can give query parameters. So as I said, uh, I would stop this. Say you want to call this function, but you want to give some arguments. Let's say you want to pass something right. Like, how the hell do I give that? So. Uh, are we recording? Oh, yeah, we are. So just wanted to make sure sometimes, you know, um, yeah so um, so basically to give query parameters you there is a word in the Python operator uh, something like uh, so you can give op quarks op quarks so that's the name so you can give the name a query parameter name so you have to give it a dictionary okay so and I'll show you how to access that as well so I, I give this name right now I would I would like to access these query parameters in my function so remember so for that uh, uh, arcs, what was it arcs or kwarks? Um, I forgot it was the syntax. It was arcs or it was star star k. Yeah, star star kwarks. Okay, so now in order to uh, access the variable, what the hell I did? Okay, sorry. <laughs> variable. Uh, just defining a, a variable here. Uh, what you would do is you would say quarks dot get. It's a dictionary. Remember, quarks means your sub doing it as a dictionary and whatever the name of the variable was so you want to say hey try to get this variable if you did not find it give it a none value don't did did not get the value did not get the key let's say did not get the key so we would try to grab the variable and let's try to print it so that way we know that it's working okay and so let's try that function out. Hopefully, if you did everything correctly, uh, so that should make sense. Okay, so that's our pipeline. We are now passing some arguments to the Python function. Let's head over here. Let's go to the DAG. Uh, it's gonna start, it's gonna take a while. So you gotta be patient. So it's starting the airflow now. The UI, uh, let's uh, make sure we remove all of that and start from scratch so good die okay so now i start the I, i'm starting the task i would refresh here okay so it started the last uh, so it's, the, the the dag was started okay so it's completed now i should see that variable remember i was giving it let's see if it works so yeah hello world um yeah so the variable works we were able to access the variable that's how you would pass variables in um uh in, in an airflow now in the next what we would do is we could write two functions how we can share data among those two functions let's learn about that a bit 
So uh, we had this function. Everything works fine. Good. Congratulations. Uh, we learned how to pass, how to write our first tag. We learned how to execute that function. Now let's learn how to write one more function and how to pass function uh, data from one function to other function in 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 in, in Airflow. So let's do that. So we have this first function execute. Uh, now I'm gonna write as I'm gonna write uh, one more function and I'm gonna say second function execute. Okay, so the way you would pass data, um, let me also print something. First function. So we know that it is on the print statement, you would at least know something. Um, instead of this hello world, we don't need that. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, so now in order to, you know, as I said, if you wanna, uh, uh, pass data among the function the only way to do that i found from from the internet is uh using xcom uh let me show you let's let's make this um, very um, simple man i mean i don't want to make it complicated so again i want to go to my snippets again quickly uh let me see okay so yeah so here what you would do is first of all let's uh, remove all of these and um, let's name this uh I'm going to name this as context for some reason, you know, uh, just uh, KY works the same way, but um, let's just, uh, you know, name it as a uh, context. So what you want to do now is uh, I want to get rid of this one. Uh, so now you want to pass data from one function to other function, right? So let's do that. So what I want to pass is I want to pass the name of the first function. Uh, this is the function. Okay. I would like to pass this to this function, but in in the, in an airflow. So the way to the, the only way to do that is uh, using following approach uh, that I found. So you gotta use something called context, and then you gotta put it in the context. So you would say context ti. Uh, so basically, you would access the context and then the ti, and then you would say dot, and then you gotta say xcom xcom right underscore push because you want to push the data right so you use push and then you would have to define a key uh that is nothing but a, a key value pair right so just say my key and then the value uh the value could be anything it could be a function it could be an address of an object whatever you want to say so for now let's define this one game function says hello okay so um, the first function would basically return a value call as the name of the function and it'll say hello okay uh, I, I i would take this return statement off i don't need that so since i'm doing this now what you would do in the second function is you want to access uh, the variable right so again as i said uh, you would change this to context double star okay so you do that and what you want to do is uh, you want to grab the instance first so like, you gotta change some code here actually uh, let's remove that so instance is equal to now what you gotta do is say context dot get now what you want to do is you want to grab that key okay you want to grab the key and then uh, I'm actually referring my notes as well because of course i do not remember all the syntax so <laughs> that's pretty much obvious uh sorry there's a mistake here actually you gotta do get context or ti so you gotta grab the ti variable in that and then you gotta say dot xcom xcom and then you would say dot pull underscore pull this would pull the data and then you would give it a key so i would like to pull uh, my key Okay, so this would actually, uh, you know, grab that. And then what you could do is you could print that. Uh, you want get, to get rid of this variable as well. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll remove that. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that. And remember, if you want to access the KWorks, uh, you can still access it using the same approach I taught you. Uh, you could grab the name and you could try that. So let's try out that one now. Uh, we would say Docker Compose up build. So now, oh, wait, we still got to change something. Uh, let me do a Docker Compose down. Uh, not Dawn, <laughs> I want to sit down. Okay, so once you do that, so we have these two functions. Now, of course, you got to define that, right? That makes definitely makes sense, right? So you got to okay, copy paste that one. Uh, as I said, I, I, I like to use the name of the same function. Um, the, it makes sense to me at least. Uh, I don't want to pass anything, so let's leave it this. Now, remember, when you want to pass data to among these functions, you gotta say you gotta enable a flag there. It's called as uh, context. So uh, let me see my notes, notes, notes. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, provide context as true. So you gotta enable this flag here. Uh, say provide context true. And similarly, you got to say provide context to by enabling this flag, you can exchange data among these functions. Now, of course, you got to add a syntax, uh, which I would show you what I mean. So first of all, since this function is dependent on the second function, you would define the arrow operator and say this one. That's pretty much it. All That's all. OK, let's revise what we did. Uh, in order to push data, we would use context and uh, we have to uh, grab the TI variable and then you say XCOM push. You give it a key value, it's a dictionary, uh, as you know, a dictionary takes a key and a value. So I did that and to, uh, to grab the value from in the next function, I just say context.get.ti variable, XCOM.pull, and then I'm pulling that data with that particular key. So that would pull the data. I would, I'm just printing it everything and defining those two functions and make sure you enable the provide context as true and then that's pretty much it with that being said let's try out that so docker compose up build so this would basically uh, show you a DAG which would have two functions we would, we, would, we would see all of that on the ui hopefully wait are we recording first of all <laughs> sometimes i forget okay so that we are recording so it's good so we would start off that uh, for you. Hmm. So as you can see, the airflow is being started right now. Uh, I would go to the DAGs again. Uh, might take a while. Okay, so we have this DAG. Now let me show you the tree view and blah, 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 whatever. So as you can see, first function execute, second function. So this is going to execute sequentially, first this and then that. Okay, uh, you can go to the graph view. Uh, simple, you know, first, first function and then the second function. It makes sense, right? And let's go to the DAG. Uh, let's try to enable this and see what happens. So we did enable, let's refresh. Uh, the DAG started, uh, we have two tasks in the queues, uh, which is scheduled to work. Uh, and the first task have completed, you see a success. And uh, now the second function will also come into place hopefully soon. Because there are two functions, remember? And the second function too. Uh, let's check the log. Uh, there is a first function then the second function. So let's check the log for the second. So you want to see if he grabs the data from the second function. So as you can see, I'm in the second function, got value, first function says hello. So yeah, it works. You are able to pass data from one function to other. So as I said, you would use something called as context and that's how you would pass data. And uh, let's also check the logs for the first one. Uh, is there a way I can go back? Uh, maybe, uh, let's go. So let me go to the DAG and then maybe, yeah, I'm going to go here and then just click here. Uh, first function, check the log. I mean, this, I, I don't have anything, but yeah. So yeah, everything looks good. There's no errors. So works, fi works fine, right? So um, that's the tip. So that's how you would, you know, uh, pass data among these functions. One more thing that in the last thing that I would like to teach uh, in this video is, I guess I want to teach you how to install libraries and modules. Uh, the only way I found it to be working is this. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's not the best way. You want to have a requirements or TXT and install all of that things. That trust me, I tried few things. It did not work. Uh, I, I was looking on a, on a Stack Overflow. It's something new, right? So, so it's still like I guess it's gonna take time. So the only way you want to make it work is run pip install request, run pip install pandas, and I can prove it to you that this is working. Um, so we can go to the DAG and we can write some pandas code there.
Okay, and now uh, let me grab Docker. Uh, I'm actually trying to grab the snippets that I wrote for the pandas. We just a simple code, nothing fancy, bro. I mean, it's pretty. So let's just add one line of code here. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna use the pandas module to you know. Uh, to read uh, to make it a data frame so just to make sure that i'm, I'm showing you that it works that you can uh, install dependencies external dependencies whatever ml or tensorflow blah 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 whatever you want to do um so yeah that's that and um, let's just print our data i'm actually uh, adding a a a a, a so yeah, uh, do Docker Compose up and let's start uh, start everything. Uh, let's see if everything works. So I'm gonna start the DAG. Let me close that. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start. So install, now we have a pandas module, right? So we started the DAG, uh, the task or whatever you wanna call the fancy name. Uh, so it's running. Uh, now we should see the pandas data frame to be printed. So let's uh, see that. So if the first function was success. Uh, still let's try to schedule the second one right there uh, refresh again so the second function is complete we have those logs and we should see a pandas uh, being printed now so yeah you see it works right so we were able to use pandas libraries here uh, we were able to basically install external dependencies uh, um, in this so that's how you would install external dependencies in airflow yeah, I would like to conclude the video and just say, guys, if you really like, really enjoyed this uh, walkthroughs of Airflow, I would uh, please, please, please do give me a like. And if you have any more questions, please uh, let me know your question in the comments. I'm not an expert on Airflow. I learned by myself by just watching videos and stuff and decided to teach you about Airflow, right? Uh, as I just want to say thank you so much for love and thank you so much for all your support have you have been giving me over the years keep smiling keep programming and never lose your hope and keep working hard and I will see you guys in the next upcoming videos